Hello everybody! So in this video I'm going to do a gaming script. Um, I'm going to use specifically Minecraft just because I play Minecraft a lot so I thought it would be a fun thing to do. I've searched the internet and found a lot of people who made uh, auto mining scripts using AHK but none of them that I found had auto detection of when you hit lava. So I'm going to show you how to create a uh, basically an automating kind of tool for pretty much any game you can obviously manipulate it to work in you know world of warcraft what have you i'm just going to use minecraft as an example here today uh, if i get a lot of requests for a certain game i'll probably try to find some cool automation that you can do with those games and demo those off um, so let me know what you guys think so i'm going to actually kind of do this in reverse i'm going to show you the script in action just so that way you see what it's going to do. That way I can better, I think, explain the code. So I already got Minecraft open here. Let's take a look. So with this, I got a lava pit down here, and I just created kind of a little tunnel of cobblestone up here. So I'm going to start mining here, heading straight towards the lava. Uh, obviously, I when I break through the wall here, I want to detect that there is lava in front of me and stop so I do not die. So let's go ahead and switch game mode here to survival. There we go. Hopefully nothing attacks me since it's dark and I only have one and a half hearts. <laughs> um, let me go ahead and run that script here. All right. So, if you play Minecraft, as you know, <clears throat> uh, if you're just holding down the click button, you kind of want to look down a little bit, not straight forward. That way, when this top block breaks, it starts mining the one below. So just keep that in mind. I mean, I guess you could really automate that somehow to snap to specific coordinates, but it's just easier to do it to yourself, honestly. So I'm just going to look slightly down. I'm going to push F1, and it's going to mine... And then eventually it's going to push me forward a little bit and just continue until it hits lava. So here we go. F1. Mind the block. Gets another one. I'm going to walk forward. I'm going to repeat. We'll just give it a second. Get to the end of the tunnel. I think we're halfway now. Probably should have made this shorter. Why not? Oh well. No, uh, one more maybe. There we go. So, it's still got one more block. Up. Oh, so there. It just detected that there was lava in front of me. It went ahead and gave me a little pop-up, exit or pause the game for me and said auto mine stopped. So now I can go back in the game and be like, "Oh man, I didn't die. Thank God." I can, you know, turn this way and push F1 again. Just keep going until I want. I'm just push. Right. So that is how that plays out. Now let's uh jump into the code and see what we got going on. The code. There we go. So the first few lines are kind of like settings that I did. Um, I did my set title match mode, which I do in all my videos. Just so I don't have to put the full name of Minecraft. I just have it looking for a window called Minecraft. I don't have to sit there and say, like, if window exists, Minecraft 1.16.4 slash single player. As long as it has Minecraft in the name, I'm good, as you see right here. Set batch lines, negative uh, one. I, I did this just because I have multiple pic pixel searches in my code. Uh, if I did not have this line, the code would still work. But the pixel search would be so slow. I mean, it would take like 10 seconds, I think, is what I tested it when I removed that line, just to see what happened. So definitely add this. A little bit more CPU hungry. So, But if your computer can handle it, 100% add this line. Next, I got my coordinate mode pixel window. That's just saying kind of look everywhere on my main window. Uh, no environment. Uh, we're doing some variable checks, and this just kind of makes it so that it's not looking for blank variables. It's only looking at variables that, you know, definitely exist. So this also helps to speed up your script. 
I mean, honestly, you should put this probably in most of your scripts anyway. I know I haven't been doing that lately, but most of my scripts just run fine, so I always forget to put that in there. So I want a way to trigger this. Uh, I just put F1 like I always do. And then I got some variables here uh, defined. Break count equals zero. Show you what that means here in a little bit. And then slot equals one. Um, so what the first thing it does, it's going to send one, which in Minecraft, that means select uh, my hotkey one. So that's it's picking my... Um, Right there, as you see, I have a few pickaxes there. So it's just making sure that it's going, you know, I don't want to start this program while I'm selected with cobblestone. It's not really going to work. Ah, I died. I wanted to press 1 to make sure I'm there. And then here's where the loop starts. So I got my loop with my bracket. If wind activated, Minecraft, you know, don't want to accidentally push F1 when I'm in a... Um, another program and have it do some funky stuff don't want to do that so then we got break count it's just going to add one it started at zero um, and what that's doing is basically the durability of a pickaxe that way at a certain point when it gets around when a, a pickaxe should be breaking it's actually going to switch to my slot number two so it's good to line your slots with just pickaxes when you run this and it should automatically just be like, okay, it's about that time this one's going to break. Go ahead and start with a fresh new one in slot two. And once uh, it's, again, in slot three, four, whatever, however far you want it to go. Then it's going to do a send, click down. Make sure you put that in brackets or it's actually going to type out the word click down. Um, <clears throat> then I have it sleep for uh, 1,300 milliseconds. I kind of just did some basic testing on how long it takes to break a cobblestone block. You can adjust this a little bit more. I know it's not 100% accurate what I just showed you, um, but I wasn't trying to spend too much time testing because when I put that number in, it worked fine. Send click up. Now what it's going to do, it's going to look if there's lava. So it's going to get my mouse position coordinates, X and Y which will just be the middle of my screen on Minecraft. And then it's going to do a pixel search. So it's going to save a variable there, which doesn't really matter. Honestly, you can just delete that if you want. It doesn't have to be there because we're not using that variable. Uh, then it's going to look at my coordinates here, uh, basically the very center of the game, mouse X and Y. And it's going to check for this RBG uh, color. Uh, this I just found out by adding a pixel search and then putting a message box after here saying what is that variable that is being displayed. And that's how I got this number here. You can also sometimes Google the stuff. I know there's a website with like a lot of like pixel colors for different video games and stuff so you can get it. But you can do it yourself with a message box. That's fine. This 30 here, uh, that's a variance variable. Uh, if I were to exclude this it would be looking for this color at a hundred percent of a match but i put a little bit of a variance saying that as long as it's kind of close to the correct shade it's okay consider that as a match and then fast just means i want this i want this to run fast without this it, it took a few seconds to do the check where now with the word fast it's pretty much doing it instantaneously uh once again that's something that will definitely eat a little bit more at your CPU. So just try it. If it you know, messes up a little bit, you can delete this. It just means your script's going to run a little bit slower. So basically, if it does not find this color, which is a color of lava, it's going to say, if air level, do nothing. Basically means continue on. Else, meaning it did find that color, Go ahead and break the loop and jump down here to that message box that we got saying auto mine stopped. The reason I have uh, three pixel searches in here, as you see, one, two, three, the colors are different a little bit just because in the game, let me get back to that lava. I guess I got to switch back. Game mode. 
think you can actually just push C and it works. The reason why is because lava is not just one color. There's three or four colors that are presented in there. There's like yellow, red, orange. So if my mouse is looking at a Pacific uh, pixel, I want to make sure that it's going to be one of those three colors. And fall. So as you can see, it's not just one color. There's multiple colors in there, and they're constantly like fluctuating. So that's the whole reason why I have three different ones in here. I could probably make this a little bit more accurate. I'm sure there's more than three colors in that lava. There's probably like four or five. These seem to be the three main ones that I saw pop up the most. So this should work fine. So if all these fail, meaning no lava's there, you've still got stone or whatnot in front of you, going to head ahead and push send W down, which in Minecraft is to walk forward, sleep for a second and a half for 100, or 100, uh, 1500 milliseconds, and then send up. That's just so I can move up and start mining the next set of blocks in front of me. Now here's that break count thing I was talking about up here where it starts at zero, but every loop it does, it's doing plus one. So once it hits 153, it's going to add another slot number, and it's going to send that slot. For the first time it hits 135, it's going to send slot two, or a key two, so that I move to my slot uh, in my second position. Once it hits 153 again, it's going to go ahead and do that also. Which reminds me, I need to actually add one line of code I forgot about. I want to reset the count for the break count because obviously I'm starting with a fresh new tool. <clears throat> now, the 135, I that's kind of a rough estimate based on... Uh, pickaxes made out of stone you might have to adjust this a little bit if you're using something higher like diamond diamond i'm sure has a lot more durability than only 135 plus you also might have to change your uh your sleep here for click down because i know diamond picks uh they break cobblestone a lot faster so all my script right now is based off of stone pickaxes just because they're so easy to make i don't want to waste my good stuff on auto mining so if you do want to waste your stuff on something bigger play around with those until you get what you need it's really a, a preference kind of thing for you uh so then else this kind of refers back up here where if window activated minecraft go ahead and you know auto mine but if that is not my active window it's going to hit that else and just automatically break out of the loop and just tell me like, hey, I, I just went ahead and stopped. Obviously, there's no point in me continuing on if I'm not even in Minecraft. Uh, you can actually tweak this too. Um, instead of just doing send, maybe you want to be in an, uh, another program. There's a whole bunch of sends where you can actually send it to that window, even if it's in the background like it is right now. So I could sit here, you know, explaining this video. Uh, but I could change the sins. Uh, that way it uh, could run in the background. I can do other stuff. I'm not taking up my computer. Solely stock on Minecraft. So there is another way to do a pixel search, kind of. And it's called um, Pixel Get Color. This is originally how I was designing the script. But it honestly just kind of sucked and was very inaccurate. Uh, whenever I hit lava, it would only work like 50% of the time. Uh, it was faster, but it also failed like 50% of the time, which you fall in lava, even that 1% fail is going to suck. So you don't want to do that. Another thing, um, I might work on this script a little bit later. Um, when you're in a tunnel, you know, you're mining underground, it does get pretty dark under there. Uh, eventually I was going to add a mouse move to turn my character like a 90 degree angle and just automatically switch to like slot 8 or something and post a torch and then 90 degree and turn back and continue mining. I just didn't get around to that. Wasn't really sure if I would find that useful or not. But I think it would be a good way to, when you're done mining, just kind of run back uh, through it. Um, 
Another cool thing I was going to add eventually to the script is at the beginning when you first start this is uh, like a little GUI where you could have a drop down saying what type of pickaxe you're going to use. And that would automatically adjust the break count here for you based on what kind of axe uh, pickaxe you're using. Uh, along with asking, you know, do you want to place torches? Yes or no? If you say no, it'll just skip the torch placement and continue digging along the way. So let me know what you guys think. I'll post this script uh, down in the description below. As always, let me know if there's a video game out there that you really want to see, like, actually, like, automate it, kind of like I did with Minecraft. This can be adjusted for pretty much any game using uh, Pixel Search in different ways. Um, I'm obviously just using mouse X and Y coordinates. You could make this pixel search do like the whole game window if you really wanted to. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. See ya.